we are in need of uh, raw materials. We have a large factory here that needs 72,000 tons per annum of soya bean. And we were struggling to get our hands on adequate quantities of soya beans. And so, like others before us that grow their own raw materials, we thought it would be prudent for us to go the same way and look at how we get closer to the farmer to grow or participate in the growing of our key raw materials of soya beans and cotton seed. So BOA project has brought us closer to the farmer, primary production, to understand some of the challenges, the ease of doing farming in Zimbabwe. I, I heard about the Saboa program through a friend, a friend who is a farmer just uh, down the road from me. And, and we're able to meet together with United Refineries Limited, and especially my good friend, the group CEO of United Refineries Limited, Wusisa Moyo. We then started talking about our new ventures in agriculture and the importance of agriculture in our country. And he said, wow, we are looking for farmers who can grow soya beans for us. We joined URL, uh, the Soboa program. I saw it on Twitter and I actually applied through that online. Uh, I joined this program this year for the first time. Why I chose soya beans this season um, over the, the usual maize. I needed a crop rotation and I felt that I could yield more and get more results from doing soya beans. Hence why I joined um, the Soboa contract and their team. In fact, from the information I got from Mrs. Msima, uh, there was um, a document which outlined the whole program how it was going to start from the application stage right up to the end. The approval process was quite rigorous. It wasn't as, 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 as easy as people would think. They do go through all the necessary checks and balances. How long we've been farming, where we are farming, you know, our passion for farming. And eventually we went into form filling the requirements that they need in terms of, you know, resources, in terms of capacity in terms of, you know, um, the land itself, where it is situated. They got in touch with me and uh, signed me up. We, um, we've done 100 hectares with, uh, through Saboa. And to be honest, there's been absolutely no challenges on the inputs. The office has been good. We got all our inputs on time before planting, so actually no challenges there. Fortunately enough, after all the security clearances and the declaration of all our assets, etc., that we have, in terms of agriculture, thank God we were successful and we were contracted to do 50 hectares of soya beans for United Refineries this year. They send me vouchers for inputs well in time. And as soon as you sign your contracts means meant the next day you could go get your inputs. Pretty much got my fertilizers, seed, all inputs on time. I'm here at uh, Mr. Simba's farm. Mr. Pangani, I realize you are reaping. Can you please tell us the process that you are doing and make us understand why you are having to do this? Uh, we, we, we are reaping these fields here. Uh, it's taken quite a long time without being properly tilled. Oh, okay. So what we are trying to do here, we are trying to break the pan then to try and capture each and every drop of rain. We are going to put uh, soya beans here. So um, soya beans is a crop which needs very good moisture uh, on the ground. 
to germinate and also to be kept on going. So um, if, we, if we put a reaper here, we have captured moisture on the ground, so it's going to help the soybeans to go up um, even if we run some days without uh, some rains. This season has been a, a, a challenge with water, flooding patterns. We had like floods of rain uh, when we first planted. So as you see in the crop at the beginning, it was, a, it was a challenge. Miss Liz, who helps us, came in with a team of experts uh, for training on uh, spraying systems. When the crop came up, we were in constant touch with United Refineries. In fact, Mrs. Msimwa would always get in touch with us. They, at some point, they organized a training, so we learned a lot. That actually was an eye-opener. Some of the major challenges that we face here in growing this uh, soya are some of the, what we call very troublesome, you know, aggressive, you know, weeds. And one of those weeds is this weed here, which is picking up here. Um, and this is the morning glory. And it's a very difficult weed, as you can see, right? Okay, it is a climber and it climbs around the plant. It then has these flowers, you know, purple flowers that comes through and they are pests that love these flowers and this weed. And those are a major challenge. Not only do they then go for the flowers and this weed, they also go for our soya beans. So this is the this morning one. glory. Uh, because this one is giving us a problem. Yes, you yeah. remember the other day in yes. the training, yes, yes, yes. we were discussing yeah. that yeah. if you yeah. leave it, mm. it will entangle, it will roll yes, itself yes, yes, around yes. the soya bean crop. Yes, 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 yes. And now when you are harvesting, yeah. It will take all the soya bean that is has rolled yes. into the chaff. Into the chaff, okay. And all these beans are lost. Okay. Yeah. Here we are at uh, field day. This is field day number one. And we are in Mazoe, um, standing in the soya produce of Mr. Luxon, Zembe, and family. Very excited. To be at this point because at one stage the Soya Bean Outgrowers Alliance program uh, started within United Refineries was just an idea but today we are witnessing the product of that idea uh, to be at field day number one and looking forward to thousands upon thousands of field days that we will have in the future. For us uh, soya beans, we don't want to be importing soya beans. We don't want to be spending foreign currency on soya beans. We would like to buy soya beans off our farmers. And so we realize the need to structure programs such as the Soya Bean Outgrowers Alliance program to support farmers so that we get what we need, which is raw materials, to produce cooking oil and chicken feed, stock feed, animal feed. And that's what the Soya Bean Outgrowers Alliance is all about. We are encouraging farmers across the country we are in Mazoe today. This used to be region one, uh, 1,100 uh, uh, millimeters of rainfall per year. But we are encouraging farmers with irrigation, without irrigation, to engage with us. Young farmers, old farmers, experienced farmers, farmers that need training. We are encouraging them to join up and help us to grow oil seeds so that we can be self-sufficient as a country for oil, cooking oil, edible oils, and for chicken feed, animal feed, and stock feeds. Yes, uh, today it's an exciting day for us here, 12th of April 2022, where we are hosting our first field day, you know, in our farming programs. 
and we'd like to thank the Lord that it has made it possible with the support and the partnership that we have with United Refineries Limited, whom we are growing this you know, soybean crop for. And they came in full support to have achieved this success. It was their full support, their responsiveness to our programs. And today they came in as well, supporting today's event in a big way. And we want to thank them very much so. And we thank all the partners that have come through, including the government officials that were here, uh, who also supported us, all other technical partners that came in to support us in this event. And as you can see, a lot of people came, farmers came through from all over this, you know, Mashona Land Central, as well as Mashona Land East as well, where we're sharing ideas. This is um, Mr. Laxon Zembe's field and we are seeing a testimony of what the indigenous farmers can do. They are able to perform their contracts. This for us is the very first field day under a, an arrangement, an alliance with the soybean um, program. We have got a determined a firm high value market which is the United Refineries. So the farmers have come out to grow soya beans and deliver to the United Refineries. So basically with the 2,500 hectares that we have established this year, this is the quality of produce that we are getting and it has given us confidence that yes, the indigenous farmer who is upcoming can also be commercialized, can also honor contract arrangements and we are encouraged. What it meant to us, it basically took grooming the farmer through, but with the selection that happened, we selected farmers who were already in the game. They were not novice to the business, but it just needed raising them to a, an acceptable standard of excellence, training them in the issues of um, utilization of chemicals, spacing and following up on the crop monitoring and evaluation. But yes, we had a few challenges, especially because of the prolonged periods of rain, followed by prolonged periods of drought. It stressed the crop. One, we could not go in with chemicals on time to eradicate the weeds. This is why you see there are traces of weeds. And two, we could not go in on time to protect the crop from disease. This is why you also see there is significant levels, there are significant levels of disease. But we are happy. The yield, there is um, sufficient pod filling, so the yield is going to be good. We are estimating about three tons per hectare. So that is good. And we will expand from the 2,500 to 7,500 in the coming season. So thank you very much. Be encouraged to team up with the United Refineries. We uh, received the, the um, test results, the soil test results, and um, upon a closer look with reference from the records, we uh, realized that uh, correctly our yields have been going down and we came in with um, uh, lime to correct the pH levels. Unfortunately, we could not um, fix all the fuels or apply all the blocks with lime. But yeah. as we have um, started harvesting now, we are actually seeing a, con a considerable uh, increment or change or a yield in that particular block. Uh, already we have put on program uh, that uh, uh, after just after um, harvesting, we are coming in with uh, lime for all those blocks, but uh, we managed to get lime according to the recommendations of the soil test uh, results and we'll be liming all the blocks according to those results. Oh, that, so that, that's quite helpful because at that time there was not going to be sufficient time for the lime to be applied and then to go in and plant. So at least before the winter crop and the upcoming summer crop, yes. the rest of the blocks are going to be uh, you're going to apply the lime. Definitely. No, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this is definitely a good point to bear in mind that if the soils are behaving in a different way, let's go in and investigate what the cause could be. And traditionally, it is good for us as farmers to know the soil um, pH for all our soils that are going to be planted to soil. It helps because if they are too acidic, 
or if they are too alkaline, we need to bring it down. We are here concluding the journey that we have had with uh, one of our contracted growers, Mr. Peter Bosha. I'm standing with his manager, Mr. George Pascoro. It's a company, United Refiners. I challenge is that he is testifying that they've achieved a yield on this swap in uh, serenade variety. They've achieved a yield of 2 to 2.5 metric tons per hectare. Right, I'm an industry manager of SOS Maisland Farm. You do my body, I get up at Tango Gavesta and the other is a Yuguda Zuma two and a half tons per hectare. Tagambo Sangano only my challenge, Pamvura. Pamvreguna, I would enga. Sabon budget I did it, but the Magetsa and Bonnet's out. Sangan my challenge, Magetsa Ponia. We are here at the Zembe farm where they established 70 hectares of a dryland soya crop. And I'm here to congratulate them. They are currently yielding an average of 3.125 metric tons per hectare. The variety is serenade. Also has allowed us to be able to have a line of sight in terms of quality. We can now decide the quality of the final product by making sure that the farmer produces something that's in line with our quality standards. My name is Peter Mumba. I work here at 600 Zimbabwe. Uh, my role basically I receive the grain from the farmers, we weigh it and we do grain sampling. Uh, when we do the grain sampling, then we go with the grain into our lab and do grain testing. That's where we do grain uh, quality control. Whereby we'll be checking the extraneous matter, the defectives, the moisture qu quantity of the grain, and, uh, and see if it is within spec of the required by URL. Uh, then from there, we would recommend the farmer if it is out of spec. We normally clean our soils for the farmers here if he requires us to clean. and. We dry the soils again if it is beyond the moisture expected by URL. Then after that, we discharge the soils to URL. And we are able to monitor, to participate. We can, for example, start to choose the type of soya bean variety that we would like our cooking oil to be made from. My name is Tabani Swindi. I'm a quality analyst at United Refineries Limited. Soya bean seed is one of our raw materials for oil production. When we receive uh, soya bean seed, we are interested in looking at the quality of the seed before we send it to the production team. What we are interested in is uh, looking at the moisture content of the seed, looking at the free fatty acid of the seed, looking at the percentage yield of oil for that seed, looking at the split of the seed, because they have a bearing or a relationship to the production team. So we want to make sure that our seed is right, doing it right the first time. Basically, that's what we are looking at. Then we are also worried about the rotten seed. We don't want any percentage of the rotten seed because we cannot extract any oil from it. Uh, and I'm sure some of the farmers that will also be engaging us to say, can I join? How do I join? We do have a criteria. We want one very serious. We'll certainly be looking for more farmers. Uh, this was the first year that we rolled out this program in the manner that we would have wanted to roll it out. We have contracted 2,500 hectares. Our target for United Refineries is 70,000 tons. So we still have a long way to go on the journey. We are looking for as much land as we can 
uh, to grow uh, soya beans. But we'll also, we're also looking at young farmers. We've got a few young farmers on our books. Farming, I see. Yana Sekuru Master Farmer 1962. We want in 2062 to also have master farmers, local indigenous master farmers, because farming is who we are. A nation cannot be a nation unless it can feed itself, unless it can clothe itself, unless it can house itself. We have not been left alone. People from United Refineries have always been in touch with us. The other good thing which they did is to set up a group soil operations. It's a group where we would interact and hear what other farmers were doing. I strongly recommend uh, people to join this Saboa program under United Refineries. I've worked with other contractors. Uh, once they sign you on, you are left on your own. But these people didn't leave us alone. In the next five years, we would like to see ourselves growing with various partners and our farming network close to 50,000 tons of soya bean for United Refineries, for our discerning consumers and for the world. I'm very impressed. They've given us like constant like attention. <laughs> the past years, I haven't had uh, a company that would invest their time in coming back after giving you the inputs each week. They'll check with you, how are things going? Do you need this? Do you need that? So far, as you can see, we are trying our best with what we have. We want to encourage the farming community to join us in this all-important project. There are many benefits to us being involved in or connected directly with, with our farmers besides creating benefits uh, to the farm farmers themselves, we are also saving foreign currency because when we import, foreign currency goes out in order for the raw materials to come in. But by doing this project, I believe that we are saving the much needed foreign currency uh, that uh, is very scarce in the country. Uh, but at the same time, we are also creating community activity community linkages with business and with markets um, and we can continue to develop together and grow together both in terms of quality and quantum of output and so we are calling out to as many farmers across the country uh, whether it's dry land or rain fed soyas or irrigated soyas which is what we prefer especially for the drier regions would require a farmer to be uh, irrigated. We are also working together with farming schemes, uh, groups of farmers that come together to create a project around oilseed farming and soya bean farming. So this is really a clarion call to every farmer, whether you're doing maize, it's not either or, it's and. So you can do maize and soya. Uh, if you're doing 100 hectares, you can take 20 hectares and plant soya beans. It's a nice alternative. It's a good legume for nitrogen fixing. It has uh, soil benefits to it for crop rotation. So we want to encourage uh, farmers around the country to participate in the Soya Bean Outgrower Alliance program, also known as SOBOA. As a new farmer, if you'd want to go into it, I'd say uh, going with the SOBOA team is, is a pretty good team to go with. They are hands-on, never let you down. Thumbs up to Innocent and Liz and Shireen from uh, URL. They have helped me to get to where I am now and I hope next year we'll do better, work faster and get a better crop moving forward. Thank you again for the support team.